Hey guys, welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video. So today we're going to go ahead and use a deck that was sent to me. Uh, I don't know what the exact origin of the deck. It could have been on Duel Links Game A. could have been a few different places. But it was sent to me over on Twitter as far as a way to effectively farm Jesse Anderson. So we're going to go ahead and talk about other deck options. Now, if you have not watched my previous video, I implore you to check it out. Uh, I talk about the event in, in extensive detail. And I also talk about the fact that I'm working on my own OG Jama deck for this it should be pretty fun because this guy's kind of annoying because normal engines that used to work don't work as consistently like unhappy girl I tried to you know mess around with and things like that didn't work as consistently now if you're intimidated by this deck list you don't have most of this deck I'm here to tell you that you can really swap a lot of this out king of the swamp is here because of his ability to search out this card here now polymerization comes from the card trader also by leveling up joey or by picking up i think uh what was what deck was it one of the starter decks warrior deck or joey deck i can't think about it right now it's like 2 a.m uh so that being said you can pick it up there union attack you actually cannot get at the moment if you did not already have it but it is one of the integral parts of this deck along with gravekeeper's vassal which you pick up from leveling up ishizu now on top of that Fusion Gate, not necessary, but it is an alternate way to get your fusions out there. Uh, and of course, Dark Magician and Buster Blader are the main fusion materials. Blue Dragon Summoner is from the card uh, uh, card trader, allows you to fish out the Dark Magician. Dark Magician, you can get you get one from simply having Yugi's character. Aside from that, you can pick up more from dueling Yugi at the gate. Uh, Yami Yugi, that is. Now, Jar of Greed is another card I just kind of threw in there just to uh, help with drawing speed up the deck a little bit. Uh, Emblem of the Dragon Destroyer comes from the Buster Blader box. Uh, again, that card and Buster Blader and the fusion materials are going to be from that set. You will need the fusion materials. You can't really swap the fusion materials out. But King of the Swamps can be swapped out for any other fusion substitute. So if you go ahead and check out here, come into the monster section. Uh, this whole bottom row here, uh, Mystical Sheep number one, Versago, Beast King, uh, Goddess of the Third Eye, those can all swap in there along with these things as well. You can swap out this thing for that. Now you lose the ability to search out your deck for a polymerization by discarding this card. They can't do that, but they can substitute. So, of course, you can run a restart or balance for a little bit more consistency with this. Aside from that, things like uh, reinforcements or master of fusions or uh, just to name a few other skills, that's pretty much the best number of skills that you can use this deck with. Or you can kind of mess it around, mess around with it and make it more like a uh, three-star demotion because that'll get you a little bit lower on life points and things of that nature but let's go ahead and jump in this will be my very first attempt now again you could swap out most of the cards if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know in the comments uh the only thing you really need is going to be the fusion material like dark magician or buster blade you're going to need one of them at least because you can't run two fusion substitutes and fuse them into another monster lastly you will need the actual fusion material or excuse me the fusion monster that you would be fusing into like dark paladin for example now again if you guys are intimidated by this deck that's perfectly fair i will come back hear me i will come back with another deck or another couple of decks for you guys so with this hand i'll just go ahead and keep this because i'm starting off i have the blue dragon summoner that basically means i have dark paladin turn one because as soon as he pops that thing i can go out into a dark magician so this is gonna be like i said my first attempt doing this with this deck so i'm gonna try not to make any sort of misplays but forgive me <laughs> uh amber mammoth is popping out Gonna attack there, allow me to get my Dark Magician from the deck, and of course, the more glossy cards, like the one like on the left side that's glossy, or prismatic, the card on the right if you're a new player, you didn't know those terminologies, the more of those you have in the deck, the better, because the more opportunities you have to get extra bonuses from the dual assessment at the end. Also, take advantage of the fact that there is also an assessment bonus going on right now. So, what I'm gonna do is interesting here. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let him strike me because I want to make sure that I have less life points than the opponent. Don't do this unless you're certain that he's not going to beat you next turn. He can't beat me here, but he can get really freaking close. So, again, don't do it <laughs> because he also can trigger. Uh, he has a equip spell card in his uh, deck that gives his monsters 800 more attack. 
So I just wanted to get in a scenario where I had 500 life points and I knew that he would be able to do it. This is incredibly risky. Again, don't do this if you can avoid it. <laughs> He's getting me exactly where I want to be. 500 life points or lower is a sweet spot because you get the low life point bonus. You get the comeback victory bonus, assuming that they have more life points than you. You get a lot of different bonuses from being this low. So from here, I'm just going to outright play. I'm going to actually ditch this to get the prismatic one to get that extra bonus don't want the normal one and again if you want to upgrade your polymerization to being prismatic you can do so at the car trader it does require a lot of R gems I believe uh, was one of these glossy no okay well, let's go ahead and pop you out he can't do anything about this he's like literally can't do anything about it now I need to brush up on this uh, target for an attack. You can make this card the attack target instead. Uh, when this card is normal summon, you can do that. Okay. So, really from here, I just go ahead and target this thing because he was going to do it anyway. 1200. It's going to force him to prompt. It's going to prompt him, excuse me, to change his monsters to defense mode. Also, Dark Paladin completely shuts him down when he wants to activate some of those equip cards, which is why Dark Paladin is one of the most viable ways to do this. Crystal Beacon, uh, special summon one. Let me read that card. Crystal Beast monster from your deck. You must have two or more Crystal Beasts. That's not a big deal to me. I'm going to let that happen because I need most of my combo cards in my hand. Uh, the only I only have one discard, and it's going to be Polymerization because I don't need another Poly right now. Now, Rare Value is the card, one of the cards that can be kind of interesting because it allows him to draw two cards. I'm not going to stop this, but the cool thing about Rare Value is it basically frees up that zone. So now he can do things like this, Crystal Release, where he's going to get that 800 extra, and I'm going to have to stop this. Gonna have to stop this. That's fine. Gonna have to stop it. Just assuming that he doesn't have another one. Okay, so he didn't. I think he only runs two of that card anyway. So, in all seriousness, learn from my mistakes in this. I shouldn't have let him even draw those two cards. It was completely avoidable. Uh, gonna go ahead and attack his... Can I switch? Gonna change battle phase. Okay. Uh, I will attack this. Gonna pop those. I want to get his back row loaded up again, because if I get it loaded up, he can't use things like Gravel Stone, which doesn't really matter to this deck, but Gravel Stone can be kind of annoying depending on what you run. Uh, he can't use other things. Crystal Beacon. That's another reason, though, also why you may not want to, because it allows him to do things like Crystal Beacon. But when you get a bigger monster out there, like Dark Paladin, like I have now, then it doesn't really matter because he can't get over this thing. He doesn't have Rainbow Dragon. He doesn't have anything really that will allow him to deal with this. So really, he's completely on the defensive. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that he has less cards than me now. So he will literally deck out before I do. So I got to get him soon. Got to get into my combo soon. He will deck out before I do. Because he, he has no way to beat me. <laughs> literally has no way. Okay, so I have most of my combo. Literally have most of my combo. I just need to draw into some more fusion mat. Some more fusion material here. Draw of Greed is a good card to draw there. Extra draw, fine. Gravel Stone, really? Seriously? <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. Go ahead. Crystal Release. Looks like I'm going to stop that. Uh... I will let one go through. That's fine. Okay, because I didn't want to play preemptively, because I think he only had one anyway. Going to set the draw of greed. Going to... I have more Dark Magician and stuff. I'm going to trigger your effect here. Give me that other polymerization. That's where that becomes really good. It doesn't wind up being a dead draw if you need the polymerization from the deck. Uh, you can continue to attack his monsters so you can get that extra monster destroyed bonus. Gonna pop the face down. It's gonna be the Topaz Tiger, but that's perfectly fine with me. He didn't send it to the zone. He let it go to the graveyard. Let it go to the grave. He does have the choice. Gonna pop that Jar of Greed. It's premature, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Uh, the Emblem of the Dragon Destroyer. Okay, that's fine. It's a cool card to thin out the deck a little bit more. I can now pop out another fusion here, so that's gonna be very important pretty much I've got him about to where we both have the same number of cards here as well I uh, pretty much was able to minimize the difference that I had there I right, gonna pop another one out and just make sure that you only use these zones don't load up that third zone you need it for the gravekeeper and you want to do that on the very last turn so it doesn't get destroyed or anything so from here I'm just gonna literally end my turn because I have everything I need to beat him 
like in another couple of turns here. Gonna stall until the very last turn because the less number of cards you have in your deck, if you guys again are new, uh, you didn't know about you know the things about farming decks. Sorry if you've been here for a while. I'm just trying to make sure that I can cater to newer players. But anyways, uh, the less cards you have in the deck, as well, the better. So I have another couple of turns here. Fusion Gate, I guess. I don't really. I'm not gonna use it. I, I'm gonna just literally just let it go. I don't. I don't need it. Also, another thing you can do is run cards that are tributes, like a single tribute card. So this is going to be his last turn into my last turn, and that's perfectly fine. My last turn, last draw. I'm going to go into the end game combo here, which is going to be Gravekeeper's Vassal into Secret Pass to allow the Gravekeeper to go direct. Here's where you need the Union Attacks, because Union Attack allows one monster to gain the collective attack of the other two monsters. You get a bonus for it being Gravekeeper's Vassal. Now, I forgot to talk about this earlier. Gravekeeper's Vassal and Union Attacks can be dropped, okay? They can be dropped for Piranha Army or Gift of the Martyr, okay? Keep that in mind, guys. They can be dropped for those cards. I totally forgot to mention that earlier. And you want to make sure you get over 900 or over 10,000 attack, basically, because from here, I can strike him with 10,000 points of direct effect damage. He has no way of stopping it. And that's game. Now let's see what we get. This should be an 8,000 farm, especially because we have the campaign bonus going on. Let's go ahead and check it out. Your heroes are awesome. Can I get an autograph? Totally, bro. Not really. <laughs> okay. That was definitely fun. I like that deck. It's very easy. Assuming that you get like an early turn, you know, you can get it done quickly. Uh, early turn Dark Paladin, that is. Okay. So we got that comeback, low life points. Again, that was the risky play in there that I said you don't have to do. Uh, we were just short of a normal 8,000 with that farm. We needed that extra 1,000 from the campaign. We're just short. But again, these bonuses at the top were all because I waited until the very last turn to beat him. Uh, because if I got him at any point down to 400, I wouldn't have got that big 2,500 point comeback victory uh, bonus for the assessment there at the top. If I got him anywhere below me, like 400 life points, 300. Uh, low life points was triggered when I reached 500 life points. Cards on the brink was triggered when I got no cards left in the deck. Again, prismatic and glossy cards being played in there. That over 999 damage that I did with the Gravekeeper at the end. Uh, and then on top of that, it would have actually worked. What triggered this is it would have worked earlier on in the duel if, 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 if I did not do that initial attack with my Dark Paladin. I tend to forget to do that because I don't really mind getting a 7,000 farm, but really in all seriousness, you don't want to do that because what would have happened is I would have got an extra 1,000 points that I did not get here. It would have been a 9,800 farm if I did not inflict battle damage at any point aside from the damage from the Gravekeeper's Vassal. So keep that in mind if you're doing this, guys. That was my first farm. And again, learn from my mistakes because I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm not perfect here. But I'm going to get out of here. My voice is going. It's like 3 a.m. almost. I've been recording all night. Have an awesome day. Again, I will be back with the other decks, I promise you guys. I'm going to, you know, if you didn't watch the other video, I'm going to make decks for Pegasus, uh, Paradox Bros. I'm going to check those out. And uh, I will have a couple more for Jesse here. So subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy, guys.